Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church this morning, or this evening, depending on when you're listening, from Tomahawk, Wisconsin, on this 20th day of December of 2020. This week's worship team is myself, Pastor Gerald Check. Technology is Mike and Sandy Wick. Projection is Karen Torkelson. Reader today is Roger Schlegel. Pianist during one of our hymns is Sherry Clements. And liturgy is put together by Sandy Pellicori. A couple of important announcements today for this coming Christmas week here in the, in the church. Christmas Eve worship services will be held on Thursday evening, on December the 24th, with a children's worship available on YouTube for you to watch. At 4 p.m., a live Grace parking lot worship with Holy Communion will take place, and a candlelight service will also be available on YouTube for you to watch. December 27th, next Sunday, is the first Sunday after Christmas, and that will continue to be available for you on YouTube. For the live parking lot service, on Christmas Eve, each car will be provided with communion cups and bulletins. Please bring flashlights to read and sing a Silent Night. Christmas with Friends dinner will still be held on Christmas Day, December the 25th, and it will be takeout and delivery only from the church here between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. You're asked to call Debbie or Sandy here at the church office to request a delivery or reserve a time to pick up your meals. There will be no in-person dining this year. We want to thank you, too, for the memory tree in 2020, to all who have supported our youth in this project by purchasing lights and ornaments for our memory tree in honor of someone that you love or for those who are gone and are missed. You can watch your, the YouTube lighting ceremony on Facebook or follow the link on our website. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and we sincerely welcome you to this worship and pray that you will be blessed herein. We're almost there, aren't we? There is news of someone special coming so the spirit of our worship today. Let us begin with our opening hymn. <laughs> Oh, we is 
Our worship today is that of the fourth Sunday of Advent. And so we light the fourth and the last Advent candle along with the other three. And as we do from our Old Testament lesson in 2 Samuel, we embrace these words. Your house and your kingdom shall be made secure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Charles Wesley wrote the words for the Advent hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Come, thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thy all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit whose forgiveness is sure, and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free, free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by God's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. 
Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we turn to the readings for our day. The first reading is recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and 16. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I look to you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. The evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Our psalm is taken from Luke chapter 1, beginning at the 46th verse. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, For you Lord... Lord have looked Look with favor, favor on your lowly servant. servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you, from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebearers, to Abraham and his children forever. The second reading is from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. In this text, Paul closes his letter, letter to the Romans by praising God, because in the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, God has revealed the promised divine plan of salvation for all humanity. Paul proclaims this gospel of Christ in order to bring about the obedience of faith among all nations. Our text follows. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, 
through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our holy gospel for this day is written in the first chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, beginning with the 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Now the virgin's name was Mary, And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And out of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I'm a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was afraid to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable to you, our shepherd and our rock and our redeemer, Amen. Certainly our approach to Christmas this year, I suspect, is nothing like the excitement of years past. The hustle and the bustle isn't really here, is it? I am like many of you, I'm sure, trying to stay hidden at home. And yet, Gabriel, a man-angel from God, inner circle is one busy, hustling, bustling angel today. Just five months ago, he stepped into church behind, behind the altar where priest Zechariah was busy doing his priestly thing. And as Gabriel did, he about blew Zechariah away to the point that We're told that Zechariah was terrified, terrified. I admit, I would have been terrified too. Angels, so far at least, haven't stepped into my life. But let me tell you, if they ever did, I too would be terrified. And boy, oh boy. Did Gabriel ever have some news for Zechariah? Or maybe I ought to better say news for Elizabeth, his elderly wife, 
like he was elderly himself. The news was really, the announcement was really unbelievable. In fact, the words were kind of scary. Elizabeth, Zechariah's wife, was barren. She was without having given birth to even one child. And as a result, Elizabeth was looked at unfavorably in the eyes of her neighbor because of her being childless. But now, Elizabeth received the announcement that she was going to be giving birth to a child even though she was so old. The light filled her eyes. But Zechariah was, again, let me say it, Zechariah was terrified. Terrified. Result, Gabriel was kind of angry. Gabriel was rather perturbed at Zechariah. And so much so that Gabriel closed Zechariah's mouth and Zechariah couldn't speak. Not a word. Zechariah looked scared as he came out the front door of the temple that day, and folks were met in silence, and no matter what motions he made, they, they could only guess that Zechariah had seen a vision, as he had. Zechariah was silent for all of the next nine months. Nine months well, like I said, this angel Gabriel was a busy angel because today Gabriel comes swooping into the kitchen of a little girl, a very young girl, a girl about 13 years old. And boy, oh boy, did Gabriel ever have news for that little girl. And for that matter, Gabriel had news for the whole world. Imagine... Mary was only as old as many of the girls in our 8th or ninth grade confirmation classes here in the church. You see, in those days, young people married in their very early teens. And that means I was terribly old when I got married to an equally terribly old, wonderful lady. I was all of 24 years old, and that old, wonderful lady was all of 23 years old. Almost unbelievable. Well, as I read this news report today in our gospel, I've tried to put myself into Mary's shoes. And as I have, me living in the North Woods with lots of big pine trees in my yard, let me tell you, if Gabriel came to me with this news today, this announcement, I would not just have been perplexed, like we are told teenage Mary was, but rather, like Zechariah, I would be on the run to the biggest pine tree in my yard to hide behind. Just note, Mary was not running anywhere, was she? Mary was simply perplexed. And Mary simply pondered what Gabriel had said. This we're told by St. Luke. And for some years now, the Christian church has called this event, this gospel, the Annunciation. Big word. Big word. Let me put it in my English. Gabriel was at the microphone, so to speak, in Mary's kitchen with breaking news. Breaking news. We need to note immediately, Gabriel has lots and lots to say, doesn't he? He didn't just say to Mary, you're going to have a baby and leave it at that. Yet I think that really is as far as Mary got 
in her kitchen that day. And yet, Gabriel Angel, the, the, the angel Gabriel went right on, full steam ahead, didn't he? Gabriel said, it'll be a son. Gabriel said, you will name him Jesus. Gabriel said, he will be great. Gabriel said, this son will be son of the Most High, all in capital letters. Gabriel said, he will receive the throne of David. Gabriel said, he will reign over the house of Grandpa Jacob forever. Gabriel said, this son's kingdom, there will be no end to it. You see, Gabriel is hardly holding anything back, is he? But finally, Gabriel has his last word. Gabriel said, this child will be called the Son of God. This child will be called the Son of God. All capital letters again. And when you get right down to it, the bottom line of this breaking news today is very precise. God is coming to this earth. God seems to think that his presence is absolutely necessary. God seems to think, God seems to be alluding to the fact that he, God, goofed. When he, first of all, created such a beautiful, created universe, and that now... When he created this chunk of human being, God goofed. Oh yes, God gave this human being, this crown of his creation, the choice to love God and the choice to hate the evil one. And God thought for sure this human being would do just that. But yes, God goofed. This human being has more often than not chosen to be bad, chosen to turn his back on his creator, chosen to take God out of the picture, chosen to pretend as a human being that to be a God all by myself. Now, before we go any further, let us remember that Gabriel's bottom line is that God is coming to this earth. See, that's the breaking news to little young Mary in her kitchen today. God is coming. God is coming. Because God goofed. His created children are turning him down more often than they're turning him up. God is sure he has to come because his created children need to be rescued from their sins. And the only way that's going to happen is God is going to have to rescue his children himself. Himself. And that is precisely the breaking news for today. That is the gospel. That is the promise we all need to hear. And so now that God is coming again, the breaking news for today is that he's coming for the first time. That's Christmas. That's what... You, little, tiny, young, teenage Mary, are going to help me achieve, says God, in his message from Gabriel. Gabriel is all out of breath. <laughs> really, so am I. Well, let's get back into the kitchen with Mary. Let's be reminded how she takes this news. Now, we know how Zechariah takes it, terrified. We know how I would turn, would take it, as I run to hide behind the biggest pine tree in my yard, terrified. But how does little Mary take it? 
Mary is only perplexed. She is only pondering all this deep in her heart. And she really only has one question, one question for Gabriel. How can this be? I'm only engaged to Joseph. I'm still a virgin. I haven't moved into the house that Jacob is, is setting up for us during this engagement time, which is what he's supposed to do during this engagement time. And he's doing it again. How can this be? My point to you today is to note that it doesn't concern Mary that he's going to be a son or that she's going to have to name him Jesus or that she is to call him in all capital letters the son of the most high or that this baby of hers is going to receive the throne of David or that Jesus is going to reign over Grandpa Jacob's house forever. Or that his kingdom will be of no, there will be no end to it. Or that the really big breaking news, that my son, my baby, is to be called the Son of God. Notice her only response. Only so far. Almost as if she didn't hear the rest of the story. All she said to Gabriel, How can this be? I'm only engaged. I'm only a virgin. I haven't moved in with Joseph yet. He's working on our house. He's not that far along with the house, house yet. So how can this be? You see, I'm not <clears throat> sure Mary's getting it. I'm not sure that Gabriel got through to Mary until, until I hear her final words. And so now, immediately, Gabriel can go back, report his mission to God, fulfilled, accomplished. Mary said it. Here am I, servant of the Lord. Let it be. Let it be. Unquestionably, what you and I are hearing today is an event in history that is kind of out of this world for us, but not out of this world for a lot of other folks. And I'm sad to say that. You see, this isn't just for us a historical Jesus, a historical person that walks this earth like we and a lot of other folks walking here. This is God coming. This is God to the rescue. Christmas is only the beginning. Easter has got to happen. But there has got to be a beginning first. But for us now, it's simple. God is coming. And let's face it, he has to. He has to. And the bottom line is, here am I, let it be. I know those are Mary's words, but you know, those words have to be our words as well. Jesus Christ is a history event, alive. You could pinch Jesus and he would say, ouch. Even now, non-Christian folks in this world will say, yes, we know Jesus is in the history books. Yes, there was a Jesus born in Bethlehem who lived up in Nazareth. Yes, we know all that. We can read the history books. And you Christians aren't lying to us about Jesus. But, but I have to tell you, 
that this Jesus is clearly not just a Jesus of history for you and me. Not just a person in a book. This Jesus is an experience we must have. This Jesus, Mary's son, is a passion we have to actually live. This Jesus needs to instill a reaction in the lives that we live. This Jesus has got to be a happening, an encounter that swells up in our everyday living. See, God comes to us not in a box that we might open or in a statue like I have been privileged to travel in my retirement years, travel to the Far East and tiptoed in many a temple filled with Buddhas, many Buddhas and other statues, dead, unalive, symbols of non-Christian belief. I've got to tell you, Many times, I literally had tears in my eyes seeing that all these folks around me there in their temples knew of Jesus in a box, but nothing more. To them, Jesus was not God. Very soon in my privileged travels during my retirement years, I realized that there weren't there aren't as many Christians in our world out there as I thought there were. Not a lot of folks who are shouldering the great commandment as Jesus asked us to shoulder it and to live. The commandment, the experience, the passion of loving God and loving neighbor and not forgetting to love oneself. I see a great urgency as a pastor in sharing this breaking news in the gospel today, sharing the announcement of Christmas after tiptoeing into non-Christian temples so that even today I need I need to sharpen the words of the gospel that I preach to you. I have to be sure that somehow I enliven the words of promise that I'm still privileged to share with you. If Mary didn't know it in her kitchen that day, when, May, when Gabriel first came with the breaking news, I more than believe that she came to know that her son was more than just a baby boy. That most of all, Jesus was the Son of God. May we all shout it from our rooftops. Here I am. Let it be. Thank you, God, for coming. Amen. Please receive God's apostolic blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Before we sing our pulpit hymn, I'd like to share some thoughts with our young people again today. Oh, it's good to see all of you. And that means I know you've been wearing your masks that's why you're here. That's why I'm here, because I am doing that too. Henrietta, I got to say thanks again. I'm sure glad you bring your little buddy along, Patches. Patches, good to see you. Woof, woof to you too. Well, I got a couple things in my um, bag this morning for us. First of all, 
I got this. And I bet you recognize that. Yeah, I like this because I use it so often. I like tea, but I'll bet you like more than my tea. You like hot chocolate. You know what? I do too, okay? So keep in mind that little cup because I know you got one at home. And you know, Pastor Susan last week read an interesting story about Christmas birds. Well, she didn't know that, but I, I knew I was going to be read a li little story for you today, too. In, a, in what I enjoy doing, I don't only read my big person's Bible. I read um, a Bible for children every now and again. Because I'm a children, and I like the way this particular pastor wrote this. It's a paraphrase, and I hope you enjoy it. Just a few paragraphs. Nice little story. Six months after he appeared, Gabriel appeared to Zechariah in the temple, the angel of the Lord also appeared to Mary, flooding her little house with light. Hail, thou woman so favored of God. He gave her celestial greeting. The Lord is with you. And young Mary forgot altogether that she was holding a cup in her hand. In her hand. She trembled and wondered what sort of a greeting this was. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have indeed found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb, and you will bear a son, whose name you shall call Jesus. And the cup rose up to her breast, where she pressed it against her heart as if to keep it from beating so hard. But she did not know what she was doing. Mary was listening. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, announced Gabriel, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And therefore, the child to be born of you will be called Holy, the Son of God. Mary, with God, nothing is impossible. And Mary, Mary smiled at her cheek, the cup at her cheek, and made the smile a delicate and loving thing. Behold, I am the servant of my Lord, she said. Let it be for me according to your words. And then the angel Gabriel departed, and it was Mary alone in her house, and the cup, a plain piece of earthenware, gone suddenly sky blue and beautiful because of the news she had heard. Because of the news she had heard. I know during this Christmas season you are going to grab a cup of hot chocolate as you do. Remember, little Mary had one in her hands too. As she heard about the Jesus who was coming. Let's pray. Gracious God, you can't imagine how excited we are. It's only days to go, and we're going to be reminded that Jesus came, that you, God, came to us in person. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Amen. I invite you now to sing our pulpit hymn. I invite you to join Sherry and myself as we sing this Christmas song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
In this season of Advent, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified and under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. So now hear our prayers for everyone in need. Let us pray. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Inspire the faith of all people. Cultivate understanding amongst us and strengthen us in love and in service to our community. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates community organizers, and faith pantries. Encourage others to provide their neighbors in need. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out your mercy to all you cry out, who all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. You, we give thanks for the ministry of Catherine von Bora Luther and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. 
Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us into temptation, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time of our service, we would normally receive our offering, and. We certainly thank you in, the, in our community of believers who have so graciously continued to give to us by either in the mail or online or even just simply coming to our office with those gifts. We sincerely thank you. And we thank you for the extra gifts this month for the kinship in our community. So please join me in our offering prayer. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Receive God's blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join in the sending hymn, Here I Am, Lord.
Go in peace and in love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.